Okay, hello guys, this is Kurt here. Let me show you how many kilometers I have here on my scooter. Let me grab the camera and show it to you. So this is it, we've got, there you go, 1,154 kilometers on the counter and still going. So, 1,154 kilometers with this guy. And I've been using the scooter now for about 10 months. So I'm really happy with my purchase still today. And I'm really uh, looking forward to actually get these 4,000 kilometers that I would like to drive with this uh, scooter over here. So in this video, I would like to explain to you how I use my scooter, uh, which kind of roads that I use, how it performed and let me just start with the maintenance and the issues that I might have had over the past 10 months since the purchase of this uh, scooter. In these 10 months actually I haven't bumped into real issues with the scooter. The only thing that I had to do is put some lubrification to lubrify here between the fork on which the front wheel starts to you know, move with the suspension here uh, because it got stuck at 350 kilometers. The wheel was like not straight anymore. And because of the fact that it couldn't really move because there was no lubrificant uh, between the fork and the wheel, I opened the plastic here, put some lubrification on here and the problem was resolved. The second little issue that I had, had to, has to do with the uh, uh, inner screws in this section over here. So if you take out these screws over here, there are some inner screws which actually push some kind of a aluminium uh, to the uh, carbon fiber pole and by the vibration uh, these screws they came loose after like uh, 70, 80 kilometers drive. So I tightened it about three times and I think the fourth time uh, I decided to put just a little tiny little drop of uh, super glue inside the section here to actually fix this forever. But yeah, I shouldn't have used super glue, so I should have used Loctite. But I didn't have Loctite when I wanted to do that. And now I'm a little bit stuck here because I cannot take these uh, screws off anymore. So I hope from the manufacturer that I can get some spare parts of the aluminium that's in here. Uh, with the inner screws, actually the section that actually fits everything together uh, because if I bump into problems uh, I won't be able to open this section or I will be op able to open it but I won't be able to mantle or to uh, uh, put everything together again and uh, resemble everything. So uh, that's what's the, on the only thing that I had as an issue uh, since or you know, maintenance. I didn't put any lubrification neither on the front wheel here, uh, just uh, at the fork and neither on the uh, rear wheel as well. Um, so let me just explain you how I use the scooter regarding battery. Um, this uh, scooter here has a 10.4 amps per hour battery and I really recommend you to check very very well when you buy the scooter that you have at least 10.4 amps per hour battery in there. If you go for the 6,000 or the 8,800 amps per hour or the 6 amps per hour, you will never be able to get the performance that I get out of this scooter. Performance wise, before I go and continue to talk about the batteries, how I uh, use the scooter uh, with the batteries, performance wise, I don't see any degradation um, as far as the range is concerned since I bought the scooter. So I still get about 22, 23, 24 kilometers out of a single charge uh, without any problems, depending on the road conditions, if there are many hills or if it's mainly flat, you get more kilometers when it's flat, of course. But uh, performance wise, I don't see any difference at all since the first day I got the scooter. So they claim that you can charge the scooter about 500 times on a single charge. You get approximately an average of 20 kilometers. So you should be able to get about 10,000 kilometers if I just do my calculations out of uh, the batteries here uh, without any issues uh, with the battery pack that is inside. 
So as I told you, how do I charge it? I charge it uh, each time when I've done a tour, when I've been using the scooter, whether it's three kilometers, six kilometers, 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, I just charge the battery all the time when I get it uh, home, uh, plug in the charger. And I think it's the best way of uh, using the scooter because um, if you actually discharge the scooter until the battery is getting lower than three volts per cell, Actually, if you look at the screen and you will see the voltage, if you go beyond uh, or below uh, 21 volts, which is three, 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 three times or so, seven packs times three volts is 20 volt, one volts. If you go below that particular level of the battery, you actually damage the battery and you will um, decrease the number of recycling charges that you can do with these uh, battery packs in there. So keep that in mind. Never, never, ever in any circumstances try to drive the scooter when it's totally flat and keep an eye on the voltage when you feel like the scooter starts to lose strength and when you are reaching the maximum amount of kilometers that you can do with the scooters. Um, regarding the folding mechanism, it's still working. And let me just also tell you how I use the scooter regarding the brake. I always use the and I um, use the front brake all the time. So the uh, motor brake, the red button here, that's what I use all the time. Uh, I rarely use the uh, foot brake. I tell you why. I met some people who have been using the version one scooter. And uh, the lady who was using the, the scooter was using the rear brake all the time. Also, when there is a long descent, she was using the rear brake until the point where the plastic got so hot that it melted off and it broke off. So I try to use the rear brake uh, only when it's really necessary and certainly not uh, on a very long, long, long descent because then it will get very, very hot and you might just melt the plastic that is around the uh, uh, rear uh, brake system. So very important that you know that because uh, you might get and you might actually hurt the uh, scooter uh, by using the rear brake on very long descents as well or when you're really using the, the rear brake continuously. Um, okay, so... Um, as I told you before, um, I'm not affiliated with FLJ, that's where I bought the scooter. And I recently got some questions and also some people who were not very satisfied about the product. Um, most of the time when I ask these people, where did you buy it? How much did you pay for it? Oh, I bought uh, the scooter for, let's say, 200 bucks. Uh, I bought it for $250 or euros or $300. And then I just have to reply to them, listen, if you buy a scooter that is normally going to cost you about $400, $500 or euros, and uh, you buy a scooter which is only half the price, you cannot get the same performance. So most of the people who buy these very cheap scooters, they're very disappointed in the mileage, in the range of the scooter. And that's because they try to save money on the battery pack inside. So the battery actually is the most expensive part of their scooter. And when you are going to uh, buy these scooters at a very cheap price, probably they've been saving money mainly on the battery pack. Also, probably the batteries that are in there are not LG batteries, are not uh, Samsung batteries, but are probably Chinese batteries, which have very low performance and they get into trouble with the scooter when they're starting to use it because they only get like six kilometers out of a single charge. Uh, also, I heard from FLJ um, uh, users or buyers that their quality has degraded. And I've also seen that indeed uh, the prices have become pretty cheap. So prices of 330, 340 euro right now instead of 440, which I paid about a year ago. Now, of course, there is a price um, decrease because of the fact that the product is in the market since quite some time. But I think they are trying to save money at the manufacturer side uh, on the battery side. 
And I think um, FLJ is not buying from the same manufacturer anymore. I can see it from uh, the pictures that I see on their website. So be aware of that. And I told you from the start, I'm not affiliated with FLJ. So, and I don't want to tell that they are selling bad products now, but uh, I start to get some doubts on the quality that they are actually offering on the internet right now. That said, um, um, I still haven't got the Hero model in. Um, it was supposed to go in production around the uh, 5th of September. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they uh, are still doing some uh, tests and improving the scooter. And uh, the new scooter is still not on the market, is still not in production. Hopefully, within a couple of weeks, they will be uh, rolling out of the factory. And I hope to be able to give to you a uh, preview or actually a review, at least a review of the Hero model. Um, myself, I'm going to try to get a couple of uh, these scooters as well, as well as the Hero model. So if you are interested uh, in having and buying these scooters, uh, go to www.pure-e-go.com. This is my website. Uh, and I will focus mainly on the European market. So it's going to be shipped from Belgium and the prices will be higher than internet prices you will find on AliExpress. But there is a reason. First of all, I need to pay import duty taxes. Second, um, I will also give you support. So if there is any issue with your scooter, you can always come back to me. Third, I will be guarantee to you that the battery pack inside the scooters that I buy are Ganin LG and Samsung batteries because I will be testing random uh, items uh, before I ship them out uh, to the customers. So I'm very sure that the battery pack in there um, are Ganin ones and you will get the performance that uh, is claimed uh, about these scooters 100%. That's it, got a phone call, so I'll let you go. Thanks for subscribing and send me a, a little thumbs up. So see you guys and peace.